Okay, this is the next video in the Power System Protection Series. And today we're going to talk about CT and VT. Going to go a bit deeper, okay? So the objective of Power System of Protection is to identify and isolate faults. Okay. We want to clear identify isolated faults so that it does not spread to the rest of the system and does not affect the other people that are using the electricity as well because that tends to happen and if it does spread, it may cause a lot of problems and eventually a blackout. So we do not want that to happen. So first of all, how do we identify? How do we identify any faults? Okay, we use any, we look at symptoms. So the kind of faults that we see is our Faults are basically where current is going where it's not supposed to go. So let's say you have a very simple diagram is like and then a load. So here is a line, transmission line. Transmission line and then there's a load here. By normal standards, you should be getting current from the generator through the line and going to the load. That's my normal standards. But if there's a fault happening, let's say around here, all the current is sucked in and the voltage would drop. So that is what you call a fault. This is a fault. And you want to identify the fault. So in terms of simple electricity terms, how do you identify such a fault? So in electricity, what can you measure? You can look and you can measure at voltage voltage and current so if you measure here somewhat the voltage if you drop let's say from 1.0 per unit if you drop to maybe 0.2 or 0.1 per unit depending on how severe is the fault is there a direct to earth fault or is it a tree branch or is it something else i have no idea but yeah we have to account for that but mainly voltage should drop and the current will rise, like current just go up, go cray cray, tay tay be cray cray, okay? The current will just go insane value and the voltage will drop. So this goes, sorry, this goes down and this goes up. So that is what usually happens in a fault condition. Nearby it, you see if it's very close, very close, because it's basically to ground. And ground is basically zero voltage, so very zero. So a bit, a bit away from ground, you get like 0.1 maybe. And if it's further away a bit, maybe you get like 0.5. So it's not as severe, but the closer it is to the fault, the more severe it is. That's the rule of thumb. And the more higher the current density. So how do you want to measure this? So how do you measure a volt? How do you measure a current? How to measure a current is you so let's say the same diagram and to a load. When we draw that, to measure a current, you kind of need to uh, attach what you call an ammeter, isn't it? Yeah, an ammeter goes in series. So this will give you a current rating. Current reading. So it's very simple, isn't it? And a voltage, you must have a voltage from one point to a ground. Let's say here's a ground and here's a ground as well. So this will give you a voltage reading. Yeah, see, problem solved very quickly, done. Except this is all bullshit and it doesn't work. Your voltage can only read that much. You cannot read like, you cannot use a voltmeter. A voltmeter is not suitable to read maybe like 240, 240 maybe it's still a bit okay. Let's say 11 kV, huh? 33 kV. Huh? Huh? Let's say about 132 kV. Your moment meter will fry and will explode. You can't have, it's not, maybe you can design a moment meter to measure that, but it's not really viable to do that because you have to mass produce it and you have to put it everywhere around the whole system. Same goes to the ammeter, the current. You know, any current at that level, which is like, very high amperes, just 
go through your current the emitter and then just fry the whole emitter just the whole thing get burnt right there and then and you cannot read garbage you cannot read any shit <laughs> you can't do that so this theoretically it will work in your lab in your low voltage lab and in your you know how you when you start to learn about circuits that's how you measure yes the principle it is you measure current through current across emitter and you measure voltage across two points that's how you do it but in power system protection and how you measure the system's voltage and system's current you don't do it that way then that's why I come back to our topic ct and vt so look at what it's called this is what you call a ct ct is what you call a current transformer current transformer <clears throat> so what happens is let's say you have I'll redraw the line diagram I'll redraw the line diagram again your, your source to a ground and then to a load so what happens here is you coil the current transformer around it and then you put an emitter so this current transformer will let's say a step down maybe 100 to 1 the ampere the ratio we step down to 100 to 1 so let's say if your current is let's say 100 amps which is impossible like you don't want to measure 100 amps because it will kill everything else you kill the the equipment you kill everything it will be re reflected into single ampere and one amps so this we pick up one amps and if you pick up one amps you basically like okay i know that the ratio is 100 to 1 and i'm getting one amps so the reading in the primary it's called a primary it's 100 amps somewhere there or well, let's say you're getting oh, 0.7 amps in your ammeter so you know that it's uh, 70 amps in the in the primary so this is what you, current transformer I would call secondary equipments they do not they do not uh, carry the same voltage and the same current reading they do not have the same reading as the what is being supplied in the line what's being flowed through in the system line so what is happening in the system is what you call a primary that means what what the houses are getting or what is actually flowing through the the lines are actually called primary so i call p1 p2 primary and primary well it's called s1 s2 secondary the current transformer is what you call a secondary okay so current transformer that's how it works so let's look at more of the the configuration there are several types of current cts so here in this case let's say here is actually the line this is actually the line itself. So the current transformer will just attach itself from P1. You will denote P1 and P2 and S1 and S2. So S1 and S2, you can just link it to your, your reading device. Come back. Okay, why do we have to label P1, P2, S1, S2? The thing is now, it's more of a notation because cur for current, the direction of a current is quite important. So if the current is flowing into P1, into P1, you know that it's going to come out of S1. That is the notation that is coming up. It's very important now. It's very important later on when you really go to other topics and you see what direction is coming up. So that's important. Uh, so you have to learn it now. So in here is what I call ring CT. That means the primary, it goes through. And the CT functions in a way that in an alternating current, you give off some sort of magnetic field. And the car, basically any transformer, it just it taps into the magnetic field energy, and then and there's some induction that occurs, and so you pick it up here, and then you have a secondary current induced. So P two is behind, P one is ahead. That means P one is here. The current goes in here. You come off S one, and you come back into S two, and this is go up. It it doesn't mean that current go in here and then oh it come out and then go in and then go out. No. The current goes through the magnetic field will cause a secondary current to flow through here and depending on your winding you will have a ratio rating of let's say 50 to 100 to 1 something so that will get will give you a a rating on a, sec, a reading on the secondary side this is more of a, a, a line diagram so the primary is this line that's where all your big current is, let's say 1, 3, 2 kV. And then the current is flowing this way. So if it's flowing this way, if it's going into P1, that means it's coming out of S1. It doesn't go inside, okay? 
I mean, this direction is coming out of here. Oh, what is happening? And do okay. So uh, here, there's a emitter. Okay, so if the emitter is reading this way, because it's coming this way, then you know that the current is flowing this way. But if the fault happens on this side, then your current will be flowing the other way. Then you know that this current actually if it comes into P2, it comes out of S2. Then you know that the current is this way. And that's one way to detect fault as well, directional fault. So now I know that by, na by, by nature, by, by normal operations, current should be flowing in one direction, in the proper direction. But if since it's flowing in the opposite direction, yeah, that something is very wrong right now. And therefore, okay, hey, something is wrong. Please take action. That's how you uh, take it out. So this is how our trans current transformer look like. And this is probably what you see in the exam question, which is very popular as well. So here is how, what you look at. Maybe I'll just label here as P1 and P2. The primary line is something like this. It goes in here and then it comes out. So the current should flow in here, go in. This is a conductor. It goes into the bar. And come out. So where's the CT? These are the CT, okay? So let's say there are one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there are five current transformers. There's a lot of them because they each carry different functions. So maybe one CT, you will go into, let's say, um, you operate a circuit breaker. It will detect some fault. Another CT, you detect maybe another type of fault. You operate another circuit breaker, maybe IDMT. And then you also want a CT for measurement purposes. So you know that how much current is flowing through and then uh, how much electricity are you selling. So measurement purposes also they want, and then maybe have one spare. So that if one CT blows out, you can just change the connection and then you have another one running. You don't have to open up the whole thing up and then going in. So why do you not have one CT to cater for all functions? Let's say like one CT just I'm saying so I one for measurement, one for another type of measurement, and then da, 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 da. So this will operate a circuit breaker, this will operate an IDMT breaker, and this will be measurement. Because there's what you call a burden. You didn't want to overload overload the circuit too much to the point where the range, the current is is uh having high percentage of error because it's already in uh what you call is is going in a ratio. Any error in, in a small amount of current ratio, it will cause a big effect. So CTs, you have their ratings. Rating. And what is called a burden rating. So how much car, how much burden can it take until the CT like stops functioning properly? So you see that each component has its own burden and then you add it up and then make sure that it doesn't exceed that burden. If you exceed the burden, that means your CT is not giving proper readings and yeah, you're not gonna get good results from that. You may just trip where you do not want to trip, and you may not trip where you needed to trip. Those are things that happen. Yeah, system protection is that you want to isolate a fault when there's actually a fault. You do not have to have a, maybe let's say just a flicker in the system, and then there's nothing actually happening, there's no fault, and then the system just trips, and then everything isolated, and then yeah, you do not want that to happen. If there's not a fault, you do not want the system to trip. Because tripping is actually one of the worst things that happen. And, you only want to trip to isolate a fault. That's all. So next we have voltage transformer. Voltage transformer. Or what you actually can another name for it is actually quite got potential transformer. It's called VT. What you call potential. PT. Because voltage is what you call a potential difference. Potential difference. So yeah, so voltage and potential are kind of interchangeable terms at here. How it will how it will look like symbolically is um in a symbol. Let's say this is a primary line. 132 kV, high voltage, very high voltage. So you have something like this, and then you have something like this. For voltage transformers, um the polarity isn't too much of a concern because voltage doesn't really have a direction. Like current can have a direction here and then voltage is like, how much is your, like in the, um, the water pressure analogy I use, how high is your water pressure? There's no water pressure in what direction? No, 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 no. So current, yes, because water flow and the current flow in certain directions. Voltage, there is no flow. There's just 
the pressure, how, pre how pressure is pressure, how voltage is voltage, how high is the voltage. So here, so same thing, there's gonna be, there's gonna be a governing isolation here. And then here's gonna be a ratio, maybe 50 to one. So if it's 132, you're gonna get, uh, let's give, give you a better ratio. I, I'm too lazy to do math right now. My brain is just started working. 100 to 1, yeah. So 132 kV, it will come out as 1.32 kV, which is still pretty big. So it's gonna be 1320V. So instead of 130 kilovolts, it's just 1000 over volts. Which, okay, that is for certain amount of voltage, you can do that. But sometimes transformer, they do not, they, they look at this. This is what you call it symbolically. They use some capacitor transformers, capacitor VTs. So what happens is, there's a line, there's a capacitor here, and then there's a capacitor here. And then you tap into here. And then you do your VVT. Ah, okay. That's how it... So here to here, let's say there's a ratio. Let's say here is one to one. Let's say... Um, so this will take 50%, and this will take 50% uh, of the voltage. So if you measure here to here, you get 100%. But if you measure halfway, you need to get 50%. So let's say here is um, 132 kV. Here you read 132, but on the 50% part, that means this part, this point, at this point, you get half of that, which is around um, 60, 66. So if there's 66 kV, here let's say you have um, 100 to 1 ratio. Boom. So you get 0 0.66 kV, which is around 660 volts. So your reading is around 660 volts, but you know that if you're reading here, you have to set it back. So if you're reading 660 volts, you're reflecting that the, the primary side, the line itself is 132. So you have a correlation. If this goes up by one, this goes up by 100, and this goes up by, uh, you double that again. So you find back up to the original. This, will, uh, you don't have to have that much of a constraint on your VT. You don't have, have a super large ratio, like maybe 1,000 to one. No, you don't have that. You have this kind of thing to help you out. The capacitor, the capacitor ratio just, the capacitor ratio just like, you know, help you to, there's a voltage divider there. And then you need tap in to the middle. And then you measure from there. Give this one, you give a voltage measurement. And yeah, that's what you call voltage transformer. That's how you actually measure voltage and current in real life, in measuring voltage and current in the system. So yeah, that's how you actually do it. You need a voltage transformer and a current transformer, and you have to set it up properly. They must have the proper ratios, and you, you kind of need to know. So yep, that is how it's done. You don't have this kind of nonsense where you just, oh, current meter in series and volt meter in parallel. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work that way, okay? That's, this is not kiddies circuits anymore. This, those circuits are for kids. So this, we're in a big boy league now, okay? So yep, that is all for this video where we talk about CTs and VTs. And see you next time.